Now I'm going to move on to the announcements of the 2018 Canada Gardner International Awards. These awards can be given, we have five awards. They can be given to individuals, as last year, if you remember, we had five separate individuals in different areas, or in groups, where there are groups of people who have contributed to the development of a field. And so this year, we've actually have two groups of people uh, recognizing two separate and important fields. So I'm going to announce the first two, the pair of the five uh, Canada Gardner International Awards. So two awards go to the contributions of Dr. Dava Salter and Dr. Azim Sarani. And their, their citation reads, they are awarded for their discovery of mammalian genomic imprinting that causes parent of origin specific gene expression and its consequences for development and disease. So together, they demonstrated the concept of genomic imprinting. It's an epigenetic phenomenon. That means something that's happening on top of the DNA but can be heritable. And that they found that genes are expressed in a parent of origin specific manner. That is to say, if we think about it, all our cells contain two copies of every gene because we have chromosomes come in pairs. So we have, for every gene, we have two copies. The exception being the X and the Y, of course, because they don't necessarily have a partner. One of those chromosomes comes in from your mother. One of those chromosomes comes in from your father. And in most cases, it doesn't really matter. Both copies of the genes are expressed in the right place and the right time. However, some genes are imprinted, and they're only expressed from either the maternally or the paternally inherited copy. And that can lead to problems. If those imprints are uh, upset, if you have faulty imprints, then you can cause developmental, physiological, and behavioral anomalies in mice, where this was first discovered. But it's had ongoing impact on the uh, predisposition and impact on developmental anomalies and disease in humans. And the piece of work that we're recognizing, particularly under this award, was really just a beautiful, elegant experiment. Dr. Salter and Dr. Sarani independently devised this elegant experiment using nuclear transfer techniques, the techniques that we use to clone animals. They were able to move nuclei between eggs. And if you have a look at this slide here, this shows you the basic experiment quite simply. What they showed was that if they took uh, an egg and gave it two paternal nuclei, so like two, two nuclei from sperm, then that egg would, would not develop. Those embryos were abnormal. If you made an egg by mixing up the nuclei and gave it two maternally inherited nuclei, it also didn't develop. The only way you can make a normal mouse or a normal human is if you actually do inherit your genes from your mother and your father. So this really demonstrated that you had to have, there must be something different about the maternal and paternal genome. People went on from this experiment to show that there were, in fact, a subset of specific genes that are differentially expressed. Now, why those genes are differentially expressed is still an ongoing argument and puzzle. But it's really one of the first so-called epigenetic phenomenon. It's a key discovery that started the field of epigenetics and has led to extensive research on the identification of more imprinted genes and their consequences. So now let's see a video of them explaining this concept further. The challenge, as always in the new research, is to develop a new technology. And the technology which we developed in the early 80s was the nuclear transfer between different mouse embryos. So this technology made it possible to take a genetic material out of fertilized mouse egg and replace it with the genetic material from other embryo or from any cell. Our purpose for developing this technology was not so much to do cloning, but actually to try to identify genes which are important for early development. What we found in, in our experiment was that the mammalian development requires fixed numbers of chromosomes. But it's not just the numbers that are important. It suggested that there was some extra information that was coming in from, from parent chromosomes. Um, 
which was dependent on the, on the memory of their origin. And we call this uh, phenomenon genomic imprinting. Normally, all the genes which we have, or most of the genes which we have, have two active copies. However, imprinted genes would then have a one active copy, be it coming from male or from the female. This changed the way how we think about genetics, so introduced what we call paradigm shift, and it also introduced the concept of epigenetics. And the epigenetics is now very prominent part of the genetic science, but it started with the imprinting. A great impact of the work uh, on genomic imprinting has been in the field of epigenetics, because this work demonstrated that these kinds of epigenetic modifications can be introduced, they are heritable and have consequences for development. We were excited to find that imprinted genes have important functions in mammalian development and physiology. We found that these genes have an impact on aspects of metabolism, homeostasis, behavior. You have to realize that normally we have two active copies of a gene, so if one of them is mutated, the consequences are probably negligible. However, if you have only one active copy, and now this one gets mutated, the consequences will be very drastic. And there are several diseases and syndromes which are based on the fact that imprinted genes were mutated. Some human diseases, such as cancers, are caused by loss of epigenetic memory. The enzymes involved in the introduction of epigenetic modifications and erasure are primary targets now for therapeutic uh, discoveries to treat many of the human diseases.